It's the winter of 1975, and Ted Bundy's got to find a place where there's not a lot of talk about missing women and where he can blend in. So he ends up in Aspen. He was very familiar with ski resorts in Colorado already. He understood that uh, those places are populated by basically strangers. On January 12, 1975, Karen Campbell disappeared from the Wildwood Inn. 36 days later, her nude body was found almost three miles away. Two months later, he heads over to Vail and ends up killing 26-year-old ski instructor Julie Cunningham. And he was just not going to stop. He had more relationships with dead women by now than living women. It was all about the hunt. Bundy goes on this killing spree, and he kills three women, a 24-year-old, a 15-year-old, and a 12-year-old. In the summer of 1975, Bundy's luck is changing. He was going from being the hunter to being the hunted. In Granger, Utah, it's a small suburb, it was like 2 o'clock in the morning. A cop was just getting off duty. His name was Bob Hayward. And he saw this Volkswagen parked in front of a house. He knew there were two young women living there. Then I turned that corner, whop, and I kicked the brick, my lights on bright, and stepped on the gas, and uh, he squirted. It freaks Bundy out, OK? He, he takes off. Big mistake. So there was a chase. He pulled in the old gas station and stopped. I pulled my Magnum out and just sit it in the crotch of the door. And I says, hold it right there. When Hayward comes up to the car, he sees that the seat is out. And that's quite a space. You could stick a body in it. Do you mind if I look through your car? In his car, he had what we would call burglary tools the ski mask, pantyhose with the eyes cut out. He had a pair of handcuffs. I says, what do you use handcuffs for? I'm a law student. He says, I use them in my classes. So I took him in and booked him. I said, there's something wrong with this guy. That put him on the radar of Utah law enforcement, and they had this unsolved abduction of Carol LaRange. I got a call, and it was Ted. He says, I've been arrested. Well, Ted, what were you arrested for? Oh, they think I'm the Ted murderer. And he laughed, and I laughed. I didn't think he was at all guilty. At one point, police did show you a photo of the mm -hmm. items they found in Ted's car. How could he have possibly explained that away to you? And he tried to just brush it off. Oh, you know, I need the crowbar for if I get in a wreck. I need to pry cars apart. I need the ski mask for when I'm shoveling snow. Carol Durant came to the police station, was shown a lineup, and was able to identify Bundy as the person who attacked her. He was arrested and charged with the kidnapping of Carol Durant. He was a likable guy, and if he could be a killer, well, who else might be? So people just didn't want to believe it. I helped raise money to bail him out of jail. Everybody in the ward felt he was innocent. While he was on bail, he came back, correct? Mm hmm What was that time like? Well, when he first showed up at my door unannounced, I was taken aback. But we started talking again. It's just like, it's just Ted. She was always kind of playing this dance around what her gut instinct was telling her and what the world around her was saying about the possibility of this perfect male person doing these terribly violent things. There was like a fleet of police cars undercover that would follow he and my mom if they went anywhere. And because of our placement in his world, is the only reason that we're still alive, I'm quite certain, because people had their eyes on it. Did that thought ever cross your mind? That he was going to kill us? I don't know. Did you think he was capable 
of murder? No. I mean, I still believed he was innocent at that point. During court proceedings in Utah, Bundy actually comes outside and talks to the media. You want to uh, get involved in the criminal justice system? Well, <laughs> yes, I intend to complete my legal education and become a lawyer and uh, be a damn good lawyer. Ted testified and was the worst witness in the world. He was an arrogant basically. And that's the way he came across on the stand. At the trial, Durant picked out Bundy as her abductor. Ted thought he could lie about everything and get away with it. It's pretty hard to explain why you drive around with an ice pick and a pantyhose mask. Most of us don't have that in our cars. Ted Bundy was convicted with kidnapping Carol Durant. Even after he was convicted, uh -huh. you thought it was a travesty of justice. You thought he was innocent. I did, and I started to think that my contacts with the police had set this all in motion. So you actually felt guilty. I did. So after Ted was convicted, I absolutely still thought he was innocent and visited him in prison. There were still many people who thought that he'd been railroaded, who thought that he was innocent, who thought that he couldn't have done it. Police officers from Utah, Washington State, and Colorado get together, share notes, and determine that they're all talking about the same guy. Everybody knew he was their man. It was just a case of proving it. But he's planning the escape. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.